Hello to everybody. Thank you very much for your interest to this little practical course dedicated to a very useful uh, toolbox called Psych Toolbox or Psychophysics Toolbox. Uh, it is a set of functions and programs which allow you to build your own neurophysiological or behavioral experimental design with really the minimal knowledge uh, of MATLAB uh, or OCTAB and just basic programming skills. Uh, nonetheless, uh, during the first day uh, of this course, I would like to remind you the most important uh, details of how MATLAB works, uh, which will be absolutely necessary for moving to the next step where you will uh, see how you can operate the functions of Psych Toolbox itself. Psych Toolbox is called Toolbox because uh, it is not an independent piece of software. It requires either the MATLAB or its free version GNU Octave to be installed on your computer. There are those two uh, packages are very similar in terms of how they work. Definitely MATLAB is more powerful, but it is a commercial product and maybe not everybody can afford it, while GNU ACTAP is by definition a free software. You can download it, install it on your computer it works quite well with Windows and then at the top of either one or the other you install also Psych Toolbox. Tune it and work with it effectively. Uh, during the second day uh, of uh, this course uh, I will tell you more details of how to install properly Psych Toolbox. There are a few tricks that you have to Keep in mind in order to, to do everything well. So the motivation to cover both MATLAB and Octave, though it is not difficult because as I told you before, uh, they work quite in a similar way, is that both have some advantages and disadvantages. MATLAB is the most popular, powerful and flexible data analysis software now, uh, while GNU Octave is similar to MATLAB and free. Uh, the GNU project is a quite old story. Uh, it was founded by uh, Richard Stallman in MIT in uh, 1993. Uh, and it is based on four essential freedoms, as the guru of the movement postulates. The user must be free to run the program, to study and change the program and the source code, redistribute 
the copies of the program and distribute the versions modified by himself or herself. In fact, this logic exactly fits what you do with Psych2Box. Psych2Box itself is free, it's open source, and uh, there is a, a nice community where you can exchange your own programs, your own scripts, uh, and uh, you can find something which has been done by other users, download it for free, use it, modify, learn. It's nice. Uh, the idea is very attractive. I highly recommend you this little uh, speech of uh, Richard Stallman so that you can embrace the beauty of the idea. For sure, when you uh, study the programming, either MATLAB, GNU Octav, whatever, it's quite useful to find some books uh, where everything is explained very well in lots of details. Uh, personally, I used this book, which is quite nice. Uh, if you don't have access to those, uh, you can try to find something local in Ukraine. Uh, the books of uh, Yuri Fedorovich Lazarev are quite good. And they are in Ukrainian, and you can download it from the uh, from the site of uh, Kiev uh, Polytechnic Institute. Those are the links, and just Google for whatever uh, is available online. There are tons of different guidelines and tutorials on MATLAB, and it is extremely popular. Uh, this uh, book on Octave can be downloaded for free. It's as free as the GNU Octave itself. So this is how MATLAB looks when you open it for the first time. Of course uh, those windows uh, can be moved and reshaped but most likely you will use them, uh, more or less. The current folder shows you your bottom folder where mm, you store all your files, your scripts, data files, etc. And you can sort them, you can find them, you can open, load them, etc. Uh, the workspace is the window where you see your variables, a temporary, um, temporary entities where your pieces of data are stored. We will go into detail uh, about um, how those variables can be created and what you can do with them. Uh, common history is just a log of all the comments, all the messages, everything basically you type in the comment window. And the comment window is your main window. Uh, you can type something there, you press enter, uh, the, the, the code you programmed is executed, and then you might get some feedback in the same window. And after it is done, you can type something else. So it's uh, MATLAB user interface, and this is Octave user interface. Uh, and you can see that uh, those are some 
little differences. The major concept is quite similar. Uh, during uh, our training, I will go sometimes to to Octave to demonstrate use it. Uh, it works in more or less the same way, but I will mostly work in in MATLAB because I am more used to working in MATLAB. But I verified for sure that uh, each and single uh, line of code we will try today uh, are well executable by both the MATLAB and GNU Octave. Uh, uh, Octave. There are two major categories of files created and used by MATLAB or GNU Octave. Again, here uh, you can equivalently uh, use either one or the other. Uh, those files which end with .m are script files or function files. This is where you save your code. So it is just a, a text file where all the, uh, the comments, all the, the lines of your code are stored. And if you run it, uh, MATLAB will execute those lines one by one from top to bottom. Uh, while such files which end with dot .mat, those are data, data files. Uh, and uh, this is a typical format where MATLAB saves any kind of data, any kind of variables. You can save, you can load, uh, you can copy, you can uh, delete, you can do whatever you want with your data. Uh, but remember that those are two very different things that you will have to deal with when you work with MATLAB. So, this is a, a brief overview of what we, we are going to study today. Uh, it's a lot. But try not to be frustrated. Uh, it is really easy, and I tried to go into the the most most uh, soft and friendly way to to communicate you those uh, basic, very basic, very simple concepts. Uh, many of uh, of you might already uh, be familiar with uh, uh, the basics of programming and it will uh, help you a lot. If not, don't worry. Anyway, we will go through it and everything will be fine. So the first will be the elementary operations, then concatenation of uh, data, Samples, arithmetic operations with uh, your data, uh, logical operations, which are extremely important for subsequent parts of, uh, of our program, matrix indexing, uh, absolutely indispensable. You need to know it and you need to use it a lot. Functions, the, the, the main uh, unit of uh, work with MATLAB, the main element of programming is the function. There are many functions. Uh, you can uh, imagine them as magic spells. You just need to know what to say in what situation and you will get an expected or mostly expected outcome. Uh, the loops help you to organize your program. It is not just 
a single uh, computation. This is a, a whole experiment that can be built based on usage of, of a loop. It is also a sort of function, but uh, uh, they work uh, in the way that several different actions are ordered in a certain sequence. Visualization, uh, you need to build lots of your data, obviously, uh, or draw images. Uh, th th there are a lot of options in MATLAB. I will show you just very few first examples. And then, obviously, we can try something more complex, more interesting. Uh, control flow statements is just a more broad uh, concept than a loop. Uh, and we will not discuss this in detail. Uh, just a few basic ideas. They can be very useful, uh, but they are not, not all of them are absolutely necessary to, to run a good experiment. And at the end, saving, cleaning, loading data. Very simple, very basic. Let's go. Elementary operations. Uh, in MATLAB, you are going to use a lot of different symbols. They are called operators. There will, will be a lot of different data classes. It looks not very clear at the very beginning, but little but little we will go to the point when everything will be totally transparent for you. Uh, first of all, person sign, like this, uh, it is a comment. Uh, it is not a comment. You can write whatever you want in any language you prefer. Uh, it is typically highlighted in Mm. MATLAB in green and it is necessary for you uh, not for running your program but to remind you about your motivation, your thoughts when you run this program to, or to explain uh, to your readers, users, what it is. Uh, the equal sign creates a variable. What is a variable? A variable is some data which is called by a name which might consist of letters uh, it can be capital letter or a small letter, line letter uh, it is case sensitive so little a and big A is not the same one uh, they can contain numbers, underscores, they never contain spaces or other interesting symbols. So I would restrict calling variables to letters and numbers and underscores. Underscores, this simplifies readability. So if you type a equal to 7, you will create a variable a which will contain just this number, 7. 
Now, what is dot? Dot is very important symbol because it separates decimals. Don't confuse it with comma. In some systems, comma is used to separate decimals. Here in MATLAB or ACTAB, just dot. Never ever comma for this purpose. Uh, in general, comma it is just a neutral separator. And in many cases, you can equivalently use a space or a comma. It doesn't really matter. And there can be one space, two space, many spaces. Anyway, it is going to separate your elements. Now we arrive to a variable with few elements. How to how to create such a data sample? Uh, you will need square brackets at the beginning and at the end. This is how you create a, a data array. So if you do something like this, uh, you will get uh, a data array with three elements. Uh, let's try to go uh, to MATLAB. In this case, it is MATLAB. 2007, pretty old. Uh, I suggest you don't go to all the versions because many of uh, modern packages they don't work with with Asian MATLABs. Mm, so we can type or we can copy paste from. Uh, the presentation you will probably type. It is not really critical that you use exactly the same numbers. You just repeat the, the main elements. The name, equal sign, brackets, and there can be few numbers inside. So we created this variable and now it is reflected in our workspace. Obviously it has nothing to do with our working folder because we didn't save anything there. There are some files stored in this folder but there is no such file like this. It's a temporary thing and in it is stored just in working in operative memory operational memory of the of the computer um, if you try this uh, you will see that it doesn't change anything so this is the name. This symbol indicates that it is a matrix. Matrix is, is a, a data storage multidimensional. In this case it is just one dimension. So it is called an array or a vector. It has certain size. Class is double. So it has decimals. It can be integer without decimals. Uh, and this is the side, one, one to three. Two multi dimensions, we will go a bit later. Uh, by the way, this file, basis, basics all examples, will be provided to you, and it has a complete list of all the uh, code lines we will use during our course today.
Uh, let us try about the same scene, but with GNU Octave. We open GNU Octave uh, graphic user interface, which, as you remember, is quite similar to to MATLAB. Here you have the window for the code. We can close it, I guess. This is working window. This is common window. This is working directory. This is workspace. This is common history. And we copy paste. Uh, sorry. Copy to Octave, exactly the same line of code, and now you get this variable here, which is which has the same properties as uh, as the the variable in MATLAB. So let's go back to our presentation and pick the next slide. Now we will try to do something more complex with our matrices. Uh, I hope it is already quite clear that this symbol represents a matrix, and that matrix can have more than uh, one dimension. This one is definitely a one dimensional matrix. But look at this example. Here we type three elements first, then we use semicolon, another extremely important operator. And then we type in other three elements. What does it give to us? Uh, it will give us two lines and three columns. But now we have a rectangular matrix, two by three. And before it was one by three. And those uh, matrices are called in a different way A1, uh, A underscore 1, and A underscore 2. Those are the names. Uh, now we have enough uh, material to do an important. operation which is called concatenation. Concatenation is not adding, it's not multiplication, it is just a combination of two apparently different uh, matrices, though they must share at least one dimension. In this case they share the number of the columns and therefore we can combine them vertically since the operator semicolon adds another row if we type the name of the first variable and after the name of the second variable and put semicolon between them and then surround them with square brackets we will be able to assign to a, another name something like this a square matrix this time this part will be equivalent to this matrix and this part 
will come from this matrix. Now we have a bigger matrix. Well, if you try to, given this specific matrices, if you try to do something like this, you will fail, because it is impossible to concatenate uh, variables with different uh, dimensions. Uh, and uh, MATLAB will give you an error message. So let's try to do everything in MATLAB. We can copy both of them. Oh, now we can have two matrices with different dimensions. One row, two rows, and three columns in both cases. And now we will use this one. See, the columns are in green. They are separated with uh, a person sign. And you can write whatever you want. It is just a reminder for you about what does it mean. Uh, so let's copy this one. This is a good uh, expression and there will be no problem with it. Voila. Now we have 3x3 three three matrix with those values. And obviously the first line, first row corresponds to A1. And the other part is exactly what was in A2. And now we have another variable which is called A3. If we try to do this, it's an error. Dimensions are not consistent. Fair enough. Uh, let's just copy those three lines into GNU Octav in order to make sure that it works well. Yeah. Here you've got everything. A3, A1, A2, 3 by 3. It's exactly the same. Uh, and I guess that if you try to run an expression with a mistake in Octave, you will also get an error message. Yeah, error. Horizontal dimensions and smash. Uh, there are slight differences in how it gives you this message, but basic principles are the same in both softwares. Uh, arithmetic operations. Obviously, with your data, you want to do different. Uh, mathematics you want to subtract, multiply, divide. Uh, we will not discuss uh, matrix algebra here. It is available in MATLAB and many of important uh, functions are actually based on uh, matrix algebra, but it is quite complex, and here we don't discuss it at all. So, what you can do with a matrix, you can multiply each element by the same number, or divide by the same number. 
mm, if you have two matrices of the same dimensions, you can add or subtract element by element all the values which are stored. So if we add a3 to a4, the first element 2.5 plus 5 will be 7.5. Two plus four will be six. So each element is paired with its equivalent in the other matrix. If you want to divide or multiply element by element, you don't just use the star or the slash. Don't forget that there must be a dot before it, otherwise it will be already matrix algebra, which has a totally different outcome and a very different rules, very different laws how they work. In this case, you multiply together a3 and a4 and you get a product. Two point five times five oh, sorry will be twelve point five and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to uh, our script where all the expressions totally similar to what is written in the presentation are stored. Copy this and paste it in MATLAB command window. This is what is called a bug. There is something wrong. And it is a mistake which is done by me. What is the mistake? This is the mistake. I try to use A3 while what I get in my working workspace is 8A underscore 3. Mm. We can go back and call this variable properly. Uh, in order to do this, you can either find what you have done previously in the comment history here, or you can place cursor in the command window and press. Uh, flash up, up pointing arrow key on the keyboard, and you will list the code which is typed previously, typed and executed. So now we remove this underscore. Mm. Obviously it was a wrong expression. If you remember, we are not allowed to do this here. We need to use semicolon in order to concatenate vertically, not horizontally. With those dimensions, only vertical concatenation is possible, not horizontal one. Now it works. We can go back to a4 works to a5 works 
and finally a6 where we multiply element by element a3 and a4 a3 and a4 have exactly the same size if the size is different this kind of operation will give you an error whoops next slide please logicus it is a very different data format it is binary as any kind of logical statement one element can bear either a value of 0 false or a value of 1 true and such an outcome can be either encoded manually or obtained after logical operations with the help of logical operators you know, know them pretty well more or less this double equal sign signifies equal so if we test if two values are equal or not if they are equal the outcome will be true if sorry if they are not equal it will be false this is an opposite operator it is non-equal so if you compare two non-equal values the outcome will be true if they are equal the outcome is false Uh, let's uh, look at a few examples. Here we have a matrix created previously. If you remember, it has a number of values. Some of them are pretty large, some of them are smaller. And if we check which elements of the matrix are bigger than 50? And we assign the outcome of this operation to a different variable, you will get a matrix like this. Now it is now it is a logical matrix. And those ones and zeros are not just ones, those are true or false. Uh, you can also compare element by element two matrices. We check whether uh, all of the elements, uh, whether the elements of the matrix A6 are bigger than A3, A underscore 3. A underscore 3 have pretty small values values of uh, of uh, the uh, of the elements while uh, a6 after we multiplied a3 and a4 they are definitely bigger in this case most likely all of the uh, values will be true and this is what we get uh, if we Try to compare if a7 is equal to a8, the uh, positive 2 outcome will be only in 2 elements, in those ones, because here both 
one and the other are true. Therefore, they are equal. Others are non equal. Now we can go to MATLAB and we will try to to do those operations. Expectedly, A6 more than 50. Only those two elements are bigger than 50. Others are smaller than 50. Therefore, all of them except just two are false. And you see that there is a different symbol next to this variable in the workspace. This indicates logical, and it is labeled as logical. Let's do another line. And the third line of our example. We compare this to this, and those elements they correspond to each other. Therefore, they are true, others are false. If we try mm, non equal, we will get an opposite. So those curvy line combined with equal is non equal sign. And now we enter and we get exactly the opposite. All of the elements except two are true for non-equal and few false for non-equal because they are equal.